Hello, welcome to lesson 3 of the cargo lesson series. These lessons are available as videos on my YouTube channel and as interactive learning materials on www.manila2010.co.uk. In this lesson, I will introduce the International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes Code or IMSBC Code and its application from the point of view of passing an orals exam at master and chief mates levels. In cargo lesson 2, we looked at the IMDG code, which provides guidance on the carriage of dangerous goods and marine pollutants when carried on board in package form. The main legislation governing safe carriage of solid bulk cargoes is the International Maritime Solid Bulk Cargoes or IMSBC code. This code became mandatory on January 1st, 2011 under the SOLAS Convention. As you know, carrying solid bulk cargoes on board a ship involves serious risk. Can you pause the slide and try to list a few risks before proceeding with this lesson? You perhaps produced a risk list which included reduced ship stability as a risk, capsizing due to cargo liquefaction, fire or explosion due to chemical hazards, and damage to ship structure due to poor loading procedures. IMSBC code provides guidelines to mitigate the risks involved in the carriage of solid bulk cargoes. This code is divided into 17 main sections, and in my following slides, I will introduce the content of each section briefly. From the orals examination point of view, it's my recommendation that you familiarize yourself with the contents of this code to the extent that you are or you can provide an overview of the code. Detailed knowledge of the content is not required. Section 1 of the IMSBC code contains general provisions describing which cargoes this code applies to. Point to note is that this code excludes carriage of liquids in bulk, gases in bulk, and grain in bulk. There are other codes that apply to liquids, gases, and grain carried in bulk. And I will discuss those codes in my other lessons on cargo. Section 2 General Loading, Carriage and Unloading Precautions describes cargo distribution to prevent the structure being overstressed and also loading and unloading precautions. Section 3 Safety of Personnel and Ship describes positioning, corrosive and asphyxiation hazards, health hazards due to dust flammable atmosphere, ventilation, and cargo under in-transit fumigation. Section 4. Assessment of acceptability of consignments for safe shipment describes the identification and classification procedures in the code and the provision of information that a shipper shall provide the master for cargoes to which this code applies to. This section also covers testing and sampling procedures and the documentation required on board the ship carrying dangerous goods. Section 5. Trimming Procedures describes general provisions for trimming, special provisions for multi-deck ships and special provisions for cohesive and non-cohesive bulk cargoes. Section 6. Methods of determining the angle of repos describes the test methods recommended to determine the angle of repos. Section 7. Cargoes that may liquefy. The purpose of this section is to bring to the attention of masters and others with responsibilities for the loading and carriage of bulk cargoes the risks associated with liquefaction and the precautions to minimize this risk.
Section 8 of the IMSBC Code, Test Procedures for Cargoes that May Liquefy, describes the test procedures for measurement of moisture content, methods for determining transportable moisture limit or TML, and complementary test procedures for determining the possibility of liquefaction. Section 9. Materials Possessing Chemical Hazards describes the hazard classification of dangerous goods and their storage and segregation requirements. Section 10. Carriage of Solid Waste in bulk describes the requirements for the transboundary movement of waste. Section 11. Security provisions. This provision of the section addresses the security of bulk cargoes in transport by sea, including the requirements for security training under the ISPS code. Section 12 provides the storage factor conversion tables. Appendix 1 contains individual schedules of solid bulk cargoes. This is perhaps the most important section that you need to be familiar with. On my next slide, we will look at an example. Appendix 2 contains lab test procedures, associated apparatus and the standards of testing procedures. And Appendix 3 contains properties of solid bulk cargoes. Let's use an example of cargo schedule for potassium chloride. In the cargo schedule, you'll first get the description of the cargo, which states that the cargo is brown, pink or white in color and it's powder. Potassium chloride is produced in granular crystals, it is odorless and is soluble in water. It also mentions that the cargo is hygroscopic. Then you get the characteristics of potassium chloride such as the angle of repose, the bulk density, storage factor size, class, and group. In hazard section, it states even though this cargo is classified as non-hazardous, it may cause heavy corrosion when wet. This cargo is non-combustible or has a low fire risk. This cargo is hygroscopic and will cake if wet. Storage and segregation, it states no special requirements are needed. For hold cleanliness, it states that the hold should be clean and dry as relevant to the hazards of the cargo. Besides what I stated earlier, the schedule also mentions weather precautions, loading precautions, ventilation requirements, carriage requirements, discharge requirements and cleanup methods after cargo discharge. And depending on the risk, for some bulk cargoes such as scrap metal, silicon manganese, cargo schedule provides minute details on the risks and precautions. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that brings me to the close of this section. My advice would be to borrow the IMSBC code and scan through the pages. Visual memory can be powerful for some of us. On that note, I am taking a bow and will meet you soon on one of my other lessons on cargo. See you then. Goodbye.